Hello and welcome back for another edition of QB1 with talented quarterback expert Chrissy Freud. And she is here to talk about West Virginia quarterback JT Daniels. Chrissy, how much do you think what went wrong for Daniels at Georgia in 2020-2021 was actually on him? Um, I really don't think that much of it was. I think that the only reason why JT Daniels has ever struggled throughout his career has been because of injury. I think that he's it's gone back to the time that he was a freshman in high school when he had to deal with a lot of pressure. And so I think that just moving forward, I think that a lot of when you look back and reflect on his career, every time that he's reached a low point, it's been attributed to some type of injury. And I think that that was the case last year. I mean, this was a quarterback that was expected to be an early round, if not a first round pick, and was very much a favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. And so I think that it just came down to some unfortunate injury circumstances. And I think that really, whenever you look at who's the more polished passer and who's the better decision maker at Georgia last year, it was not Stetson Bennett, it was JT Daniels. For JT, having been at a couple of programs already from what I see, what does he bring to the table for West Virginia as a quarterback in 2022? I think he's a good decision maker. I think he's a really good passer. And I think that he's a more polished passer just because of the fact that he has to rely on that because he can't move very well. And so I think that he's um, a quarterback who has a lot of confidence, who has shown that he can bounce back from injury and retake jobs over and over again. And I think that really, if it was not for some of these unfortunate circumstances that he's encountered, that we'd be looking at a quarterback that was much more highly ranked, that had a lot more ex excitement surrounding him this year. But I think that just things went wrong at Georgia. He got in some bad situations and it was just time to transfer. And so we'll see what happens in West Virginia. Considering that that injury history, that bad luck, having been in a couple of other schools before this, how big is his chance for resurgence at West Virginia this season? I think it's huge. I mean, I think that this is a quarterback that was a national level prospect for so long um, and that showed that in the times that he wasn't dealing with injury. And I feel like people have forgotten just because of the fact that he ultimately was benched in favor of Setson Bennett uh, there down the stretch. And because he had to deal with all those unfortunate circumstances that, I mean, it's college football and the NFL are both very much a what have you done for me lately type of thing. And so I think whenever other quarterbacks start to rise, other quarterbacks start to do well, other dark horses emerge, you forget about the guy that was a Heisman contender that had to sit on the bench because he was injured. And I think that it comes down to something as simple as that. So I think that if he can uh, get over at West Virginia, he already is obviously has done a good job. And I think that obviously he'll end up being the starter, go and win some games over there and put on a good performance. I think he enters the conversation just the same way that he was before. Talking about that potential that, that was once surrounding him, what is his the ceiling for him, and, and can he become a potential top draft pick, first round draft pick, like he was once slated to be? Yeah, I mean, I think that everyone's seen JT Daniels as a quarterback with a high ceiling. Of course, he doesn't have that mobility that so many people seem uh, to desire these days. But I think that, like I said, it always comes down to with a quarterback like this is can he stay healthy? And he's had a lot of issues with staying healthy uh, throughout his career, so. If he cannot, then I think that it's going to be really hard for him to get drafted highly um, and possibly, if at all, depending with how uh, deep this quarterback class is. But I think that if he can stay healthy, this is a quarterback that he was not a Heisman contender for no reason. He was not as high in the rankings and the mock drafts for no reason either. And so I think that, like I said, it comes down to if he can have a full, healthy season and be successful in a new environment, I think that this is a quarterback that we're talking about in the top 10 the exact same way that we used to. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more QB1.